Hello and welcome to Inside Cottonwood. I'm your host today, uh, Mayor Tim Malinsky, Mayor of the City of Cottonwood. And uh, I'm very, very fortunate today to have uh, two of my favorite people in with me. And I don't say that about each and every one of my guests. <laughs> <laughs> I have Superintendent King here with me, uh, Superintendent of uh, Cottonwood Oak Creek School District. And we have uh, Board President Eric Marcus uh, with me as well. And I hope Steve doesn't mind that I'm, I'm really using you, uh, Steve, as a ploy to get Eric Marcus on the show. <laughs> I've wanted him to be on the show for, for years now, and I just, this is a really great it's opportunity, so. Use away, Mayor. All right. Well, so, thank you for inviting us, Mayor. Oh, much. it's a pleasure. It really is, it's really a pleasure. So uh, we have a half an hour, and I kind of wanted to, to talk about um, really how COVID-19, of course, has impacted both of uh, what you both are doing uh, on behalf of our students and families here in the area. But before we do, um, I just want both of you to introduce yourself uh, quickly. We'll start with you, Superintendent King. I know you've been on the show before, but sure. just a brief uh, synopsis of, of your, uh, you know, where you're from and how you got to where you are today. Wow. Um, well, my name is Steve King. I'm the superintendent of Cottonwood Oak Creek School District. I'm going to my fourth year as superintendent, my sixth year with the district as assistant superintendent. Before, um, this is my 20th year in the Verde Valley. Um, I, my roots go back to the Verde Valley with my grandparents, um, who I uh, used to spend summers up here. They moved back here in the 1950s, and they actually ran the movie theaters here. If anybody remembers the old drive-in in the, the Rialto downtown? That's when I grand brought my grandparents to town. And, um, it's been truly my honor to, to be able to serve this community and the students of this community for the last 20 years. Um, both my wife and I, is, she's a teacher over in Camp Verde, and uh, I, I feel very blessed to be in this position and to uh, be able to help as many people as I possibly can. It gives me great pleasure to, to be able to help people. Yep, great. Mr. Marcus, I actually don't know too much about you, so hopefully you can take five minutes and tell me everything about you. <laughs> I will do my best. Um, well, it's been my pleasure to serve on the, uh, on the school board. Uh, I uh, uh, have been in, in uh, northern Arizona for uh, the last uh, eight years, okay. um, originally from uh, Los Angeles. Um, I uh, spent most of my career as a senior business executive. I've worked in um, more than 25 different countries, uh, mostly in the high technology area. I have a law degree as well and have practiced law. Uh, but I, I have a heart for service. Um, and uh, when I moved to Northern Arizona, uh, I had the opportunity to lead a nonprofit uh, based in Flagstaff doing economic development um, and uh, transitioned from that um, to uh, Health Choice Arizona, which is uh, a, uh, uh, both the Regional Behavioral Health Authority uh, for the northern six counties of Arizona, uh, as well as a uh, access health plan. And my responsibilities are for uh, social determinants of health. Mm -hmm. So housing, um, employment, food, nutrition, education, uh, criminal justice. Um, uh, and uh, when I uh, saw the opportunity to serve a couple of years ago um, on the uh, Cottonwood Oak Creek School District Governing Board, um, I, I gave serious thought to what kind of contribution I might be able to make. Um, and uh, spoke with Mr. King, spoke with uh, Superintendent Carter at the county, uh, and made the decision to, to join the board. And I've, this is my second term uh, as, uh, as president of the board. Uh, we have a wonderful board. Uh, uh, I feel very privileged um, to, uh, to be working with four other people who, uh, uh, for all of us, have put the, the interests of our children uh, ahead of any personal agendas. There have been no personal agendas. Just, mm -hmm. just let's do what's right for our children and for our community. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's, in a nutshell, uh, why, I'm, why, I'm, uh, why I'm here. Um, I'm very privileged to have uh, a superintendent like Superintendent King and a team as outstanding as the team he has put together. We have wonderful leaders um, uh, in, uh, on our faculty in our, and in our administration. I'm very proud of all of them. Well, yeah, there's certainly a lot to be proud of. I, every day I'm humbled when I see the great work that, that you guys are doing. Um, on, again, on behalf of the, the, the students and, and parents in our entire community. So, um, your your work up at the nonprofit in Flagstaff that was NARBA, isn't that correct? Uh, it it was at one time called NARBA, mm -hmm. uh, which stood for Northern Arizona Regional Behavioral Health Authority. We still are the Regional Behavioral Health Authority, but we are now called Health Choice Arizona. Okay, okay, great. Well, we're lucky to have you with your your vast background uh, and experience, and you've been the 
board president now for you this said, is my second, second term. term okay great and uh and you live in cornville correct i do i live in cornville good deal and did you come to cornville from la no uh, i i've had several stops in between okay. um, most recently in the midwest okay um, but uh, but i'm very happy to be here um, and uh, uh, i'm very happy to be um, serving our community yeah well we're lucky to have you thank you so uh, last march when when you guys uh, we, we took our extended spring break when when COVID hit did you imagine that we would be here now um, still not able to to return to on-campus learning I think it's very hard to predict what's going to happen. Um, you know, we, we were certainly taken by surprise, as everyone else was, mm -hmm. back in March um, when, when the pandemic first, first hit us. Um, and, and, you know, we brought together the teams necessary to put together programs as quickly as possible mm -hmm. to finish off our last uh, basically two to three months mm -hmm. of, of school and immediately begin planning for what might happen um, come August, um, and and I'm uh, I, I think uh, when we look at the, for example our May board meeting, mm -hmm. in our ba May board meeting, uh, the superintendent presented us with four different scenarios. Um, so when you think about you know what did you think might happen, mm -hmm. we really didn't know, really didn't know. Mm -hmm. uh, one scenario was things are normal and and we go back to the way things were. Another was was uh, um, Things are almost normal, but we have a number of restrictions on, on class size, on how many students can be in a bus, um, on, on sanitary conditions, on masks, on a whole, a whole variety of other things. Um, a third being um, we don't open. Um, and, you know, we, we end up having not being able to be on campus at all. Right. Um, and then the fourth was uh, we, we get started, but we end up um, uh, with, uh, with the pandemic uh, rising again and having to close after we've already opened. Um, Superintendent, I think that's, that pretty much summarizes the, the different scenarios that we began considering uh, you know, as early as, as April uh, mm -hmm. going into our, our March meeting. So we've been planning uh, on any one of those scenarios occurring um, for several months now. Mm -hmm. If it if it helps, I my daughter uh, was in kindergarten when when the pandemic uh, hit, and uh, she's now entering first grade. And I just from my own personal experience was blown away at how quickly and uh, uh, quickly you assembled uh, you know coursework to take home and you know the emergency uh, uh, teaching that was put into place you know during the last couple months of school last year. And uh, it's obvious to me that you've put a lot of uh, thought and planning into what you know what the different scenarios could look like as we as we approach this school year um, not so. only that but i think it's important to note that not only are we responsible for educating the children of our community but we're also responsible for feeding them mm -hmm. um, and and throughout this period um, we we organized bus runs um, to be able to feed literally tens of thousands of meals. I, I don't know what the total number was, but we're approaching 100,000. Yeah, nearly 100,000 meals served to our community. We served breakfasts, we served lunches, we served dinners. Um, mm -hmm. Our school district has a lot of responsibility uh, in addition to um, education. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have to take a quick break here, so just uh, for one minute, we'll take a break. When we get back, we'll talk a little bit more about what you guys have done to prepare uh, through the summer months. Okay? Thanks. This is Bruce Morrow, Transportation Manager for Cottonwood Area Transit. Remember, we cover the entire Verde Valley in Sedona. Cottonwood Area Transit has you covered wherever you want to ride in the Verde Valley, all day, every day. Take Cottonwood Area Transit through Clarkdale, Verde Village, and from 26 locations in Cottonwood. With Verde Links, it's a quick and easy trip to Sedona every day. Don't forget our connectors to Camp Verde. Visit CottonwoodAZ.gov for Cottonwood Area Transit and take a seat. Let's go ride! There are people who struggle with addiction and homelessness. Sometimes it may feel like there is nothing we can do to help. But there is. You can make a tax-deductible donation and help those in need transition away from homelessness. When you give someone a handout, you could actually be supporting an addiction. 
A better life starts with better health, especially for those living in the streets. Support solutions, not addictions. You can make a difference. Visit cottonwoodcares.org. All right, welcome back to Inside Cottonwood. Again, I'm your host, Mayor Tim Alinsky, and I've got um, Board President Eric Marcus with us and uh, Superintendent of Cottonwood Oak Creek School District, Steve King. And uh, before we left, we were talking about um, uh, sort of our, our outlook as, as we went into the pandemic, and I optimistically thought uh, this will blow over quickly. I think a lot of us have, and slowly as, as summer has waned on, I think everyone's sort of settling into the, uh, the idea that we're gonna be here for a while. Um, However, prior to all that, uh, you two were making plans uh, for worst case scenario. And so I want to talk a little bit more. Uh, maybe you can share some insight, Mr. King, on, sure. on what, what you did to prepare over the summer, prepare your, your staff, your faculty, teachers, uh, prepare the community. So as President Marcus said before, um, we were looking at those different scenarios. And one of the, the scenarios we looked at very closely was the, uh, the likelihood, or at least the possibility, the high possibility, that we would remain online. So we started looking at the different programs that would be out there. We saw that during the closure, the initial closure in the fourth quarter of last year, um, yes, I, I think everybody did a marvelous job, but we needed to give that a little bit more structure as far as it w that was the feedback we gave from the families. So we started looking at different platforms and we, we landed upon edgenuity for a number of different reasons, but giving that structure to the, to the teachers and to the families out there. We also started looking at the, the ability to connect to the internet as well as having the, the devices. So over the past um, three, four weeks, um, we've distributed almost all of our Chromebooks. We have 1,200 Chromebooks out of the community. We also have 175 um, hotspots. And that was part of the planning for that, as you said, worst case scenario. And I'll be the first one to tell you that, that uh, online learning is not no replacement for in-person learning, especially for our youngest learners, our K-1, 2, 3s, all the way through. But I think for any child, um, the children that we serve, they need that, that connection, not just to their teachers, but to their classmates. And that's what we're looking at now, is how do, we, how do we bring children back onto our campuses and how do we do it safely and how do we do it responsibly? And I know that there's, there's, a, there's a, some disagreements out there on, on what that looks like, and, and I understand it. I understand there's a lot of hurting people in our community, um, and, and none of these decisions are easy. And I'll also tell you that it's uh, this entire experience, the last five months, five plus months now, um, have been the most humbling times of my life, and recognizing that, that uh, you know, I don't think anyone anticipated, as you said before, it kind of hit us as a surprise, a, a global pandemic, but the next steps we have. And I'll also reiterate what President Marcus said as, as far as the team that we have, and I can't, I can't sing their, their praises high enough as far as our administrative team, our principals, our, our directors, our bus drivers, our food service people, our, and our paraprofessionals, and, and our teachers that are out there. And, and they're all working extremely, extremely hard, and this is not easy. Um, you know, someone sent me an email the other day that said, you can do better. And uh, it's hard to disagree with that statement because we can always do better. Um, but it's certainly not from lack of effort and it's certainly not from lack of thought. Mm -hmm. um, this is, these are very, very complex issues that we're facing. And uh, my message to the staff this, this, uh, at the beginning of the year was, was patience and grace. And I think that's, that's what we need to give a little bit, you know, all of us need to give that a little bit. And it's not easy right now. I know people, you know, it's, it, it's hard out there. You know, this pandemic has, has, has affected families in a very deep and profound way and it's affected our community in a very deep and profound way. And there are no easy answers, but none of these decisions are made lightly. They're not made without thought. They're not made without deliberation. They're not made without discussion. But there's a lot of factors that go into these. And when we're making these decisions, everything comes down to capacity. And capacity means a lot of different things. The first is, is, uh, is staffing. What staffing do we have? And to that end, um, we have brought back a little over 200 children back to our campuses, our highest needs learners um, back to our campuses, our, our children with special needs. Our children that are homeless may not have access to a lot of things. Um, our ELL learners, English language learners, we do, and we are bringing more kids back um, at every opportunity we have, but staffing is, is an issue that we've had. How many staff can we actually staff that with? Another capacity issue is money. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't see a whole lot of extra dollars coming in, and most of the dollars that we had coming in from the CARES Act, the federal program, um, those were expended in the fourth quarter to get us over the hump in the fourth quarter of last year. Um, we've been hearing rumors and uh, whispers out there from, from legislatures and from the Congress that they'll be supporting schools more, but, but we are limited in it as far as our financial capacity goes as well. Another issue has been space. How do we, how do we utilize our space to the most effective capacity? Mm -hmm. And it's also our legal 
That's another consideration of the capacity of what we have. What legally do we have the right to do mm -hmm. and what legally do we not have the right to do? Mm -hmm. And I think the largest overarching part of the capacity that we speak of is, is what is our ethical responsibility? And that's where it really gets a little bit gray because ethics are gray. And, and how, do we, how do we serve to the, to the best of our capacity? And, and I will say that, that uh, you know, we can always do better. I'll, I'll be the first to admit that. Lord knows. But, but uh, we're doing a lot. Mm -hmm. and, and I would just like to add, if I can, to, do, to the Lawrence. superintendent's uh, uh, comments. Um, my heart goes out to, to, our, to our, our families. Um, this is a very, very difficult time. Um, you know, when, when you hear from a, uh, a family where mom and dad are both working um, and, and they have really no way to deal with child care issues, let alone child education issues, um, these strike right to the heart, okay? But we also have a responsibility to nearly 2,000 students 2,000 children and 300 faculty and staff to ensure that not only do we provide education, but that we do so in the safest possible way. And, and we, have, we, have, we have consulted with physicians, um, with a with variety of epidemiologists, of epidemiologists nurses, pediatricians. nurses, pediatricians, thank you. Um, we're not making these decisions blindly, mm -hmm. um, and and they're hard decisions. And I know that there are people in our community who disagree with our decisions, um, and uh, and and I understand that, and I have compassion for those people who have those viewpoints. Um, however, being responsible for those 2,000 children and and those 300 um, faculty members and and staff. Puts, puts me and our board members in a position where we have to do what we believe is the right thing to do. And, and I hope that our community will understand that, um, but we are truly doing the best we can mm -hmm. to protect and educate. Um, and if you look at the difference between our online platform at the end of last year and what we've implemented this year, it's night and day. Um, we have a system now that has accountability, uh, that has rigor um, and lots of resources that are out there. Yeah, we've done training over the summer with our staff. We spent the entire month of July doing staff development on on effective online learning for this very scenario, mm -hmm. knowing that, that it really it, it's not it's not ideal. Children need to be back in school. Nobody feels that more than I do. I understand it, and I and I I don't just understand where these where, where some may be coming from as far as just get the kids back to school. I feel it. I know it. My, my life would be easier if the children were back at school as well. Mm -hmm. I get that that's where they need to be for a multitude of different reasons. And, and we'll get there. Um, and someone said to me today when I said, we'll get there, I said, we're already there. We're working in that direction. And so the next three weeks until the 14th of September are all going to be about bringing the children back to school mm -hmm. in a slow, calculated, methodical way. Mm -hmm. um, there's so much that's unknown about this virus. There's so much that's unknown about, about uh, about how it, it not just affects children, but it affects adults. And as you know, we, we, we lost somebody over the summer, mm -hmm. and, uh, and that impacted a, a great many of, of people in our district and from COVID. This, this, right. uh, Steve passed away from, from COVID. And I don't want to put, be put in a position again that uh, I could have done more to ensure their safety. But I also want to make it clear that our decisions are not based on fears. Absolutely. Okay? Our decisions Absolutely. are based on science, That's right. on, 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 on strong medical advice, and, and we are making the best decisions that we can on behalf of our children. And sure. we're being prudent and we're being wise. Right. And we're going slowly mm -hmm. um, and cautiously. Mm -hmm. When well, you told me that you know at the beginning of the, of the school year too, we got together and, and I know that you know your your efforts are um, are measured and calculated, and and you're both. When you open, you want to open and stay open. That's right, and that's that's the key. And I think you know we can look across the nation at some of the schools that are needing to shut down again. Um, but I know you want to have precautions in place so that we don't go that direction. You're going to phase in slowly and, and intelligently. That was I, the fourth scenario. We open, then we have to close back down. Mm -hmm. And and once we open, we want to make sure that we've done everything that we possibly can so that we don't have to go back into into shutdown. Sure, and I think nothing reason. would be harder on our families right. than another shutdown. That's and, right. Yeah. Well, and the other thing that I would say to our community is. We need your support 
um, if you have time to be able to volunteer to come into the school, okay, as your wife has done, mm -hmm. as my wife has done, uh, we would really value that. That gives us greater capacity. It gives us the ability to do more things within, uh, within the on-campus environment. Mm -hmm. So if you are interested, uh, uh, please call the district. 634-2288. Which is, I believe, uh, on the screen right now. Um, <laughs> so please, uh, please call us. Please let us know that you can volunteer, even if it's an hour uh, a, a couple of hours, whatever you can do, will make a difference in the lives of our children and in the capacity that the superintendent was talking about in terms of what we can do to get back into, into school uh, as soon as possible. And we will be having our next board meeting uh, uh, on Monday, uh, uh, sorry, Tuesday, September uh, first, 2nd. Is first. it the first or the second? It is the first. It's the first, okay, sorry. Um, so on September 1st, we will be having our next board meeting. We expect that to be an in-person meeting uh, with appropriate uh, CDC guidelines being followed. Um, and uh, um, um, certainly parents who have different viewpoints are, uh, are entitled to come and, and uh, make public comment. Um, but we really hope that you can understand here in the community what we're trying to do, why we're making the decisions we're making. Mm -hmm. um, these are decisions being made thoughtfully, okay, um, with, with the health and safety and education of all of our community's children taken into account. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right, one more quick break. Sure. We'll be back in just one minute and we'll wrap up our conversation. Thanks. This is Bruce Morrow, Transportation Manager for Cottonwood Area Transit. Remember, we cover the entire Verde Valley in Sedona. Cottonwood Area Transit has you covered wherever you want to ride in the Verde Valley, all day, every day. Take Cottonwood Area Transit through Clarkdale, Verde Village, and from 26 locations in Cottonwood. With Verde Links, it's a quick and easy trip to Sedona every day. Don't forget our connectors to Camp Verde. Visit CottonwoodAZ.gov for Cottonwood Area Transit and take a seat. Let's go ride! There are people who struggle with addiction and homelessness. Sometimes it may feel like there is nothing we can do to help. But there is. You can make a tax-deductible donation and help those in need transition away from homelessness. When you give someone a handout, you could actually be supporting an addiction. A better life starts with better health, especially for those living in the streets. Support solutions, not addictions. You can make a difference. Visit cottonwoodcares.org. Welcome back to Inside Cottonwood. I'm your host, Tim Milinski, the mayor of Cottonwood. We've got Superintendent Steve King here with us from Cottonwood Oak Creek and Board President Eric Marcus. And uh, we are down to the last five minutes, unfortunately. I feel like we could be here for hours. Um, there's a lot to discuss, certainly. And uh, our conversation has been mostly about how COVID-19 has impacted uh, what these two great gentlemen are doing on, on behalf of our students and families here in the area. And, um, you know, one thing that um, that I feel terribly about is the, the pressure this has put, of course, on, on the families, and, I, and we're all feeling that very much, but, but our, our poor teachers. Yeah. You know, I mean, we're, we're asking them uh, to do so much more these days in yep. a state that has historically not treated our, our teachers very well as far as salary. Yeah. Um, so what do you do to, to motivate them and, and keep them I inspired and, and working hard on, on behalf of all of us? Well, it, it starts off um, with a great staff. I mean, they're, they're fine people, you know. People don't go into teaching just, just on a whim. They're there because they care about children, and I think it's been very, very hard for them with the online piece, and especially with the direction our district has been going for the last five years or so in, in making sure that we have those, those positive relationships. Every, you know, we, we talked to our, our entire staff that, that uh, education is a close contact sport, and we can't have close contact now, and that's caused a little bit of an issue. Um, a lot of all of our teachers they're working diligently online trying to stay connected with families not just through their zoom calls or their, their edge community platforms or or their, their their google classrooms but through those phone calls and making and keeping those connections but it but it's much harder mm -hmm. you know when you saw a kid you could always walk past a kid and kind of know how they were feeling and checking in with them shake their hand give them a pat on the shoulder maybe even a hug um, we can't do that right now and i think that's been probably the hardest thing on our teachers is, is that lack of, of, of just that connectedness 
that is absolutely vital for any kind of education. You know, any education, in my mind, begins with, with relationships. It's a precursor. Without the relationships, you can have the best curriculum, you can have the best pedagogy, you can have the best facilities, you can have the best technology, you can have all the best everything. But without the relationship, you'll never get there. And as we've been stressing that for, the, for all these years, how do we, and this is, this is something that I think about often, how do we continue to build those relationships? Not just for the online piece, but when we come back, because things are gonna be different when we come back out of necessity, uh, the, 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 the safety protocols that, that we are, we're going to have in place. Um, and, and that concerns me a little bit, because it's not just with the teachers or the students, but it's also with the teachers themselves, and that level of collaboration, or even with, with the greater and broader community. You know, everything starts with a handshake, and we've been talking about that for many years in our district. Shake those kids' hands, look in their eyes, ask them and mean it. How are you doing today? Right. And, and know who they are. And we know that, especially in the elementary grades, Absolutely. the most important thing that we can convey to our children is the desire to want to learn. That's right. Um, and that springs from a relationship. That's why this district has been involved in capturing kids' hearts for years now. Um, we recognize the critical importance of the relationship between our teachers, our staff, and our students. And, and COVID-19 has made that very, very difficult to do. Yeah. Can, I, can I just tell you a short story? And this is mm -hmm. from, from a, we have a, a custodian over at Cottonwood Education Services. And his name is Justin. And Justin um, is an amazing person. Kids love Justin. And I still remember my, my custodian from back when I was in grade school, but Justin is a very special human being in making those connections with kids. Last Thursday, he, he came into my office and he said, Mr. King, can, can I ask you some, for some advice? And I said, I said, of course, of course. And he says, uh, he says, what do I do when these little ones come up and want to hug me? And so, I thought about it for a minute. I said, well, you know, what I do is, I, what I used to do is when they wanted to do it, I'd get down to their level. So now I just let them hug on my legs a little bit because you can't take that away from them. Mm -hmm. He said, oh, well, that makes sense. And he left there. Mm -hmm. But just those connections with those, with those meaningful, appropriate adult relationships are absolutely vital. And how do we do that? And that had an impact on me, what, what Justin said to me or asked me. Mm -hmm. How do I do that in this new age of COVID that we're facing? Um, because we can't let it go entirely. Mm -hmm. We can't. The children need it desperately. Mm -hmm. Adults need it desperately. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just the children. You know, I see, I see you know, I'm holding a mask right here in my hand, you know, and I, I hear about how children you know, are having a hard time with masks. Well, I haven't seen that. I've seen adults have a harder time with masks than the children have necessarily. And what I'm seeing with a lot of children right now, the ones that I'm seeing over at Cottonwood Education Services or the, the special education services that we're providing or at the, at the uh, uh, on-site support services, is the children are, pr are, are pretty, they're pretty resilient. They're happy to be back. They're happy to be around friends. They're, they are there. Um, but, I, but I know that our families as a whole are struggling mm -hmm. in many ways. And we have to be that level of support to the best of our ability right now. Mm -hmm. And that ability will grow. We'll grow into our classrooms. That's what our plan is, that, this direction we're moving, mm -hmm. because we recognize that that's where they need to be. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, <clears throat> Capturing kids' hearts is your is your philosophy, and I know you've yeah. you, you built your team around that philosophy. And, and I just want to let you know it really does show. And I, it's difficult with online learning, absolutely. But I, I'll say that at least again anecdotally through my daughter's experience, um, her time uh, online with her fellow classmates and, and her teacher uh, is is time that she looks forward to and cherishes. And and they are yeah. certainly resilient, and and they'll snap back. But I can tell you um, how her teacher manages. Uh, a classroom full of first graders yeah. online with uh, with such uh, uh, such skill and talent. And who's your teacher? Mrs. Thurner. Oh yes. Yeah, uh, she's she's fantastic. She's a um, very kind person. Yeah, but it's very good. And, and uh, just want to let you know that the capturing kids' hearts is definitely still 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 there. So right. once we return to on campus, uh, we'll all be back in, in full swing. So you warm uh, my heart. Yeah, these these are definitely uh, challenging times. There's no uh, there's no rule book that we can look to, to to tell us how to how to lead um, but I just want to say to both of you gentlemen you're doing a phenomenal job and I, I really just appreciate your your leadership and uh, just stay the course and thanks so much for the meals served and and the the connections made and uh, you know again you stepped up immediately when this whole thing came about and gave the the PPE that was so much needed 
uh, during the beginning of, uh, of this crisis, and you've always just stepped up to help out our community, so thanks to you both. Thank you're you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for all you've done. Yeah, my pleasure. Well, thanks. We're, we're going to have to get both of you back in because there's still a lot more to, to discuss, but we're unfortunately out of time, so uh, we'll, we'll wrap it up, and, and thanks. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah. Take care.